The eight things fit and healthy people have in common. After being on my own fitness journey for the last 10 years and working with over 500 people and also being surrounded by other amazing fitness and health coaches and other fit and healthy people, I've seen that there's a lot of common traits that these people tend to have. Not only do I see these traits over and over and over again, but also these are the things that we like to teach our clients in order for them to not only see great results, but to actually sustain them. These are the eight things that I find to be the most important and most common amongst the most healthy and fit people, not only inside the gym, but outside the gym as well. So for each of these eight things, I'm going to break down in detail what they are and how you can ultimately implement them or build these things into your lifestyle. And if done properly, being able to have these eight skills and habits and things in your life, I can almost guarantee you're going to not only see, but be able to sustain success on your own journey. So let's dive into these eight things that healthy and fit people have in common. Number one may be pretty obvious, but it's something a lot of people lack, which is consistency. Consistency does not mean you never miss a workout. Consistency does not mean you are hitting a certain calorie or macro goal every single day. Consistency means that you don't go a long period of time without doing something that contributes to your health. So missing a workout is okay. Having a day where your meals don't go as planned or you don't eat according to your normal routine is okay. What's most important is that when you fall off, when you have those days that are not so great, those days that are not perfect by any means, you can get back on track without giving yourself a hard time. You can get back on track the next day. That is the power of consistency. The power of consistency is not being perfect, but being okay with things going off the scheduled plan, going off routine, and then getting right back on. I always like to tell people the only way to truly fail is to give up. So unless you actually just give up and stop trying for an extended period of time, you're being consistent. So being consistent really just looks like you're continually moving the ball forward even on your hard days, even after your hard days. That is the power of consistency and it compounds over time. It's just like investing. Early on, when you're just investing little bits here and there, you're really not building extreme wealth or anything crazy. But if you look over time, you'll see this wealth will build more and more and more. And that's the power of being consistent. The longer you can be consistent for without giving up, the better your results will be over time. Number two is finding joy in eating healthy and cooking. Now, at first, when you are going from a diet that's highly processed or you're eating out all the time, to be honest, I know for me personally, I didn't find too much joy in eating healthy. But I'll tell you something crazy. It's like when I first started to cut out fast food from my life and really started to focus on eating more clean foods and started cooking more, number one, I sucked at cooking. I made a lot of meals that were absolutely disgusting, but... Over time, I learned to figure out my taste buds. I learned to figure out like, man, when I put this seasoning on or this sauce or tried cooking the meal this way, like I started to really enjoy it. I started to find a love for like barbecuing and putting stuff on my Traeger and uh, smoking meats. And I really found a passion for actually cooking different style meals and really found what works for me. Ultimately, right now, you may be in a place where you don't really cook much at all, and you may not even like your own cooking, and that's okay. But I promise you, over time, you start to find that acquired taste that you really enjoy. And let me tell you, like now when I go eat out, it's not even close to the meals I cook. I'm not that amazing of a cook by any means at all, but I love my food. I love my cooking. I enjoy cooking because number one, it tastes really good. But number two, I feel good because I'll tell you this, now when I eat out, unfortunately, my digestion is not the same. It is not enjoyable to sit on the toilet after eating out anymore. 
And I know that might be graphic and probably not at all what you wanted to hear or what you expected, but I have to be honest with you. I don't enjoy it for that reason. I don't feel good when I eat out. My body doesn't like it. And because of that, I found a lot of joy in cooking, making my own meals. I enjoy eating healthy because I love how it makes me feel. Number three is setting realistic goals, but not obsessing over them. A big mistake people make when they first start is they set these big lofty goals and they become so hyper-focused and obsessed on reaching that specific goal. I want to hit this specific weight on the scale. I want to weigh this amount or I want to look this certain way. Well, what happens is people create these bad relationships with the scale. They create these bad relationships with the mirror. And ultimately, when they don't look that way or they don't see those results, they become frustrated, upset, and end up giving up. That is not what you want to happen on this journey. What you wanna do is you wanna set these goals and be okay with them taking longer than you expect. You wanna set these goals and know that eventually you'll get there, but really falling in love with the process is what you should become obsessed with. What you should become obsessed with is hitting those daily targets, those action items. Those goals are likely outcome goals, meaning that you have no direct influence of the actual outcome. What you actually have control over is the actions that you do on a daily basis to get to the outcome. And if you win every day by hitting those action items, the outcome will be inevitable. You will hit that outcome. You will get to those goals. And it's just a matter of time. So if you can have patience along with these goals, I have no doubt you'll get there. Number four, I'm going to keep short and sweet. They avoid fad diets. If the specific diet that you are trying right now or you're going to attempt has a name, you probably shouldn't do it. More often than not, people try the keto, they try the fasting, they try the this, the that, the whatever it may be. More often than not, if the diet has a name, you will not be able to stick to it for life. Because if you're on the keto diet and you go to your kid's birthday party and they have cake and you want a damn slice of cake, go eat the cake. <laughs> or just be miserable and that's okay too. But at the end of the day, if you truly want to sustain your results, you want to find the diet that is best for you, you need to do the diet you can stick to. And the diet you can stick to is probably a combination, a sweet spot of all the little things that you've learned from maybe trying all these diets. So what we need to do is find something that fits your lifestyle, something that fits your daily routine, something that fits into what you enjoy, what you like. And that probably includes carbs and that probably includes eating breakfast and that probably includes having freedom and being able to eat out, go to social events, have date nights, have a drink here and there. And that should be okay. What you don't want to do is cut out or find or do anything extremely restrictive because I promise you, it will not be sustainable, it will not be enjoyable, and you're eventually not going to stick to it, which could lead to the downfall of you not feeling healthy or you not looking fit, which is why you're ultimately watching this video. Number five is placing value on the effects of exercise that are not how you look. Placing value on things such as how you feel when you work out. Like personally, when I work out, after a workout, by the way, most days I go into the gym, I do not, do not always feel like, oh, I'm going to have a great workout today. I just feel so energized. Like, to be honest, more often than not, I'm in the gym. I'm like, oh gosh, here we go again. And then let me tell you, the most amazing thing is after my workouts, I feel so refreshed. I feel so energized. I feel so amazing after my workouts. And that's why I still do it. That's why I still show up. That's why I still put in the work in the gym because I know how amazing I feel after. I also love how my joints feel so I can hop into a squat any time of the day. I also love the energy boost I get for the remainder of my day. I usually work out in the mornings or mid-afternoon and that's when it gives me that energy boost to continue my day. And I also love the effects it has on my mental health, my confidence. As many of you can probably relate to, one of the amazing benefits of exercise is the increase of your own confidence, your own self-worth. One of the main reasons I started working out about 10 years ago was to increase my confidence. I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. I wasn't comfortable with who I was. But when I started working out, I started to unveil this confidence I had within myself. I started to become not only more comfortable in my own skin, 
but I started to become more comfortable in my everyday life. I started to figure out who I was, why I was doing the things I was doing. And I started to be more comfortable in other situations. So don't think exercise is only about how you look. Exercise is so much more than that. And if you shift that focus to the other things aside from how you look, chances are you're gonna look pretty damn good. Number six is separating your social time from your workout time. The most fit and healthy people I know don't go to the gym to go socialize with their friends or to go chitter chatter with all the people inside the gym. I know sometimes people may ask you questions, you can get distracted, but I'll tell you this, the most healthy and fit people I know tend to get in the gym, they get their work done, and they leave. And maybe after they have the social hour or or after their workout is done inside the gym, then they can go talk. But most importantly, what I find is that the people that are most healthy, most fit, and most successful on their own journeys, just like many of my clients, is they go into the gym, they put their earphones in, they're locked in, they go get their workout done, and they get out. So they're not wasting a ton of time at the gym. They're there for 45 minutes, an hour, maybe an hour and 15 if they stretch after But ultimately, they get in, they get out, they take care of business, and that's what helps them see success on their journeys. Number seven is allowing life to dictate their workouts and not the other way around. Too often, I see people early on their journey moving all these things around in their life just so they can go get their workout done. When the more successful people I know adapt their workout to their lifestyle and the things that they have going on. If they have a really stressful day and they still want to go get their workout in, they know how to back off and go a little easier and to listen to their bodies to adapt the workout to their lifestyle or their day-to-day life. Being able to mold and shape their workouts, their routines into their daily life is what makes these people successful. During the busiest times of my life, I have gone from working out two hours in the gym three days a week to I'm doing 20-minute workouts every day. I've gone and changed my workouts to adapt to the different phases or seasons I'm in in my life to make sure I can still be consistent. Working out looks different for everyone. You may go through a phase where just going on an hour, 30-minute, 15-minute walk after every meal may be the thing that you need to do in that current season or phase of your life. But ultimately, adapting your workouts to your lifestyle is going to be much more effective long-term strategy compared to someone that is just trying to stick to this rigid, strict, straightforward routine that they have to do every week or, or all hell breaks loose. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is find a routine that we can mold and shape to our lifestyle. And last but not least, number eight is moderation. Do not overdo it. And do not overcomplicate it. Finding balance, synergy with your lifestyle is the most important factor. Being able to have the moderation of still having things that you love integrated into your routine, integrated into your life, is essential. You should still be able to eat the cookie. You should be able to go on that date night have the drink, enjoy the foods that you love while still seeing results, while still being consistent on your journey. This also goes for your workouts. Your goal in the gym should not to be to kill yourself every time. You should not walk out of the gym feeling like you just got beat up. Leaving the gym energized, in a good mood, are the things that you should experience. Leaving the gym ready for the rest of your day, ready to have an amazing day. Those are the things that you should be looking for in moderation. Moderation looks like being able to take your foot off the gas pedal at times when things are crazy in your life, but it also looks like putting a little more pressure in the gas when things are going well, when life is good, when things are all in alignment, you can go a little bit harder, but you're not putting the pedal on the floor and you're never fully releasing. This ties into that consistency of being able to adapt the workout schedule, the nutrition to the phases or the seasons in your lifestyle. And ultimately, if you can really work on and master and practice the eight things I went over today, I promise you, this journey is gonna be easy. 
this journey will be sustainable. This journey will lead to you being one of those healthy and fit people. One of those healthy and fit people for life, more importantly. And if I could leave you with one really important tip, that is not to go and try to implement all eight of these things. What you really need to do is pick one of them. Get good at it. Practice it. Implement it. Make it part of who you are. Make it part of your life. Then add the second. Then the third. Then the fourth. I always like to tell people, if you can add one, two, maybe maybe three really solid habits into your life every year, just imagine where you'd be in five years. And just know after those five years, you'll never be back in the shoes you are in today. You'll never go back to the unhappy version of yourself, the unhealthy, the unfit version of yourself. Because I know that's not what you want. What you truly want is to get there and stay there. To not have to go through those same struggles, the same frustration as you have in the past. And if I had to give you one bonus, one little bonus on top of all of this, is don't start the journey because you hate yourself. Don't start your journey because you're so upset with who you are, what you look like, or anything like that. Do not come from a place of hate. The final thing that all of these people have in common is they come from a place of love. They love themselves so much that they want to take care of themselves. They treat themselves like they would a friend or a family member. They love the potential they have. They love the opportunity they have to take care of themselves. They love that they are able to change who they are, change how they feel, change how they look, to change the habits and routines and the skills that they have right now so they can become the best versions of themselves. And ultimately, I want you to know, this isn't easy. And it's not for everyone. But I do know you're more than capable of it. And if you need some extra help or you need some assistance, I'm one message away. My Instagram DMs are always open. And if you ever have questions, I'm always here to help. Ask away and you shall receive. So that being said, I hope you got a ton of value out of today's video. I hope there are a few little nuggets in there that you could take away and take action and implement into your life. I hope you have the most amazing day of your life today, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.